Hello, my name is John Rosebush. This is the third video on a disclosure of my new energy invention. This video will cover the reasons why it's so critical that this becomes a worldwide project. In a previous video, I talked about, you know, to help out poor countries and to, to uh, avoid nuclear wars, etc. But really, the main reason why this invention needs to be a worldwide project is for economic reasons. You know, this invention can be implemented in particular geographical sites around the world. So let's say that Southern California needs electricity. I want to use the United States as an example. Let's say that Southern California needs electricity. And the best place to generate electricity within that area is Mexico. So now, do we have to go through all these agreements and all this other stuff to generate the electricity from Mexico to come to Southern California to bring it to Southern California let's say they need to build desalination plants San Diego needs electricity or do we say well Mexico doesn't really want to so now we have to find another way to get electricity there these are the types of issues you're gonna find let's say that uh, up in uh, let's say Vancouver needs power and the best place to get it is say from the United States so what, are we going to tell Canada no? Well, you know, we're pretty good friends with Canada, so we probably go along with that. But, you know, there's many parts in the world where that would not happen. You know, uh, if in the African countries and South American countries. So mainly for economic reasons, we need to be able to cross state lines, cross country lines, any lines that are possible based on scientific uh, reasons based on gener the best places to generate power based on science not political or anything else it is so critical you know I'll give you another example let's say Quebec needs electricity and my gosh the best place to get it is from the United States but we have to ship it up there in other words we have to create hydrogen liquefy it put it on a ship and ship it up there but we really can't produce enough easily to do that but we can produce part of it so now we, we can we can support 70 80 percent of their electrical needs by shipping the hydrogen well then that says that hey maybe maybe now Quebec has to have some other power so maybe then we think about a nuclear site or we think about sending up some of the windmills up to up there etc to help supplement it you know we're going to find these types of situations all over the world and you know the, the easiest way to do that is for it to be a worldwide project now, someone can say, well, maybe, you know, well, Mexico can't really afford electricity. Let's say we have to send electricity down there. Well, uh, what? So we're just going to let them uh, go ahead and use their, their diesel fuel or some other ridiculous thing that costs a heck of a lot more because, because of some type of an agreement or because we don't have the money to do that. Now, we are talking about building a sustainable energy for the entire world. For the entire world. And sustainable last forever you know this will be one of the things that determines if mankind is going to survive and how they're going to live on this planet you know I talked before about money being a, a inhibitor instead of a determining what we're going to work on well these are perfect examples of it now let's say South America can produce energy and it, and they say to their country next to them, well, you can't have it. Or let's say that England can produce enough energy for Ireland, but they say no. So now what does Ireland do? Do we run diesel fuel for Ireland or some other ridiculous thing or burn coal or something? I mean, we can run across this in wealthy countries, in uh, poor countries, etc. Now, should we produce, you know, a terawatt of power for uh South Africa, which I believe we can, no, they don't need it. But, you know, we should supply them enough energy to where they could uh, expand their economy into kind of what they want without being just totally ridiculous. And we can do that all over the world. And imagine, I believe we can do it for 10% of the cost, which is, allows us so much flexibility around the world. We can have our scientists, actually, and our engineers and, and the people that, with the know-how without political or even without monetary issues make these decisions all over the world and we could be off fossil fuels now maybe there's some places where we can't get off fossil fuels and that's okay 
I mean, uh, this isn't meant to be some strict, strict guideline, but what it's meant to do is power this world through common sense and through sustainability. Sustainability needs to be the key. Uh, let's say there's some places around the world where we just can't. It just is impossible. Well, then they'll have to probably continue running gasoline engines and power their, their country either by natural gas or by coal or something. But if it's possible to eliminate the need of using natural resources, we should do it if it's reasonable. And what I mean by reasonable is it can cost twice as much. That's still reasonable to me. What isn't reasonable is something that would cost an extreme amount of money because that creates sustainability. And we are not using up our resources. You know, by doing this around the world, think about it. We've solved climate change because we're no longer burning fossil fuels. We've solved uh, clean water because we can build desalination plants around the world. And so what's left? Food shortages, population control, that's it. Those are the two things. In agriculture, I, uh, the only thing we can do is eliminate using fossil fuels for our farming. And we can do that because that's engines and that, that, that we can do. We can't, I can't, this project doesn't help at all with uh, trying to determine the best way to farm. But what it does do is it gets us off fossil fuels. Now, let's look at within uh, United States. You know, I mentioned earlier in a video that United States would be easy because, you know, we have state, uh, state energy, you know, regulatory commissions, etc. Well, I'm not so sure it would be. Because what we've got is we've got a whole bunch of board, meaning of all these utility companies dealing with all these states that want to protect their, their job, that want to protect their position. Because 90% of them sit around about a third of the time and, and determine how much bonus or how much compensation they deserve. And then they uh, recruit board members that will agree with them. So that's a third of their time. Another third of their time is socialism. And about a third of their time is making a few decisions that they have to make because usually utility companies almost run themselves. So that's what we're facing in the United States. So I'm not so, quite so sure that the United States would be any easier. Actually, it would probably be more difficult than poorer countries. But we have to get over this. this. We have to get over this. Remember I told you I could create up to a terawatt of power in one site. And I told you that it could back itself up because we can shut down very small segments of it and continue running it. So, you know, where we should be spending our time is how do we set up the grids? Because if we eliminate fossil fuels and we depend on electricity, it's critical that we generate much more electricity than what we need for our country. And it's also critical that we have grids set up that we can reroute things and have backup grids, etc. And it's also very critical that we have backup storages from the excess electricity that will recreate hydrogen in case there, uh, there's, there's shortage, there are backup shortages that are needed in case something happens. You know, we can set up such a secure, safe, uh, with backups all over, all over the United States, and then I look at other countries and they can do the same. There, there is no reason why we cannot set up a world where the whole world is powered. 80% uh, of the world is powered by this, and the other 20% we're very much researching everything we can research in order to uh, power that, that piece of the world. You know, this actually will, uh, like I said, solve climate change, solve uh, powering the planet. Uh, we won't run out of oil this way because we're not going to use it up. Now, what we do need to do, though, is, is convert everything except for the, the most challenging, which I believe is airlines and large boats. Now, let's also take a look at natural gas. Natural gas is used in a lot of homes. It's going to take a long time, and I don't, I don't suggest that we go through and start changing all that immediately. But we can quit using natural gas for power plants. Those are just a few places. And we can quit using natural gas for so many things. But the homes, it will take time. But as we switch things over, we would go to electric because we'd have an abundance of it, at least in a good portion of the world. So, you know, these are all the types of challenges that we face, but they're easily overcomable. One thing that's going to have to take place is uh, monetary policy is going to have to completely change. We're going to have to be able to say to, to the whole world, if you need it, we'll do it regardless. And it doesn't make any difference. We, we're, uh, it, it's, it's totally insane if we can do this for the cost that I'm talking about, to leave any country behind or anybody behind. But the country, that's why it's so critical. It's a worldwide project. The countries have to coordinate, have to agree, and uh, 
let me tell you, country boundaries and state boundaries cannot make does not make any sense whatsoever with 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 this new energy invention. So I don't know how we get this to happen, but it really is socialism for that reason. But it's socialism based on economics, and I hope the world understands why it is so critical to to create a, a worldwide project and to actually install this where it benefits all of mankind. I thank you for watching this video, and uh, I hope to talk to you soon.